Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, Sunday's edition. Today is June 30th, pretty much the end of the month, and I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Okay, well, good morning, everyone, or afternoon, whenever you listen to this video. So we're going to cover uh, quite a few items for the week. So we're going to talk about McDonald's, Baidu, AMD, Real, which is a new IPO, CETV, HPJ, NG, CPHI, and SORL. And I think Jim might even have a bonus today. Yep. So let's begin. Let's talk about McDonald's. Well, you guys know, I have been trading this option from an options angle and I really like McDonald's in terms of a longer term hold um, you know for those of you that like longer term holds you know, I really like this stock because there is good opportunity here with McDonald's I mean as you guys know um, you know they've uh, you know have a partnership with Uber and you know what I really believe that their sales is going to actually expand as a result of the fact that they have Uber Eats partnership. I mean, just think about all these like millennials that um, have a subscription and they all, you know, too lazy to go pick up food or maybe they don't have a car um, or, you know, it's raining out. Like there's different reasons why people don't want to go there, but you know what? It's so convenient. Like I mean, go on Uber Eats, you order your food, it gets delivered. Um, so you know what? I think term McDonald's has a future in terms of the stock becoming bigger and bigger. I mean, I've been watching this from just shy of two hundred dollars and I have seen this expand all the way up to two oh seven. So I mean the two oh six break the other day was super big. And um, you know what? That is just amazing to see the growth that I've seen this happen in the last probably two months so I am liking McDonald's longer term as well and uh, really looking from an options perspective so we'll be looking at some option calls uh, probably tomorrow uh, probably out towards mid-July so if you follow on Twitter or stock twits um, you can stay tuned for a McDonald's option idea and I'll post it in real time uh, just make sure to follow and subscribe, and then I'll share the alert. So, Jim, over to you on McDonald's. Yes, McDonald's. We hit a year high again last Friday at 207.99, and I'm liking that 208 area. As you see, we had a low of the year at 153, so it's up a good 60 bucks almost or more, and it's been nothing but an upward trend. It did touch down a few times to the 200 EMA on a yearly daily and then we broke a resistance right around the 190 area and like Miss Vegas said the last couple three months we've really had a nice little bounce breakout and you can see I had a trend line right here and we broke past that trend line that I had last month so let's pull up the 20 day and get just a little look at the 20 day one hour we did have a hard pullback one day it did almost pull back to that 200 on a 20 day EMA and then she just barely broke that trend line and bounced right above it and following a new trend line I'm gonna go ahead and now I'll just leave it alone I do have my supports here we did have an ascending triangle Friday you can see the ascending triangle right here so we're due for another double top breakout on the daily at 207.99 so I'm gonna pull up now the, the three minute and I'm gonna draw a couple supports in here I see one Oh, basically, definitely a support down here at 207.46. And i got to change that. Should always be prepared. Right here around 206.97 is going to be one. Then we got another one right here right around the 207.24. And a low support right down here at 206.80. And I do see another one right here at 207.63. But we are due. We did go after hours and, and break my resistance level of 207.91. And they did have a, a high of 207.99. So the mid pivot point support level is going to be right around the 207.24.
and if it goes below that you got a lower support down here at 20680 and then uh, low low support right at 20656 and if it breaks any of them it could bounce on the daily one minute I'm going to go ahead and pull this up on my moving averages I do play these two moving averages you see it did hit the 34 on the daily here at 20763 that'll be your first support your second support will be 20724 and then you got your three low supports down here which is 207 20680 and then a final low low down here at 20656 but I do believe we're going to have a double top breakout here on the daily one minute at 20791 and we're at 208 after hours so that's MCD keep a good eye on it watch the option trade on this if you can get in a daily uh, scalp on it at a lower price that'll be fine Miss Vegas next one is Baidu yeah, so, you know, as you guys know, there's the, you know, G20 summit uh, with President Trump and China's President Xi, um, you know, reaching, uh, you know, kind of having an agreement at the G20 summit in Japan. Um, you know, he did say he would allow the U.S. companies to continue to sell to the Chinese tech giant Huawei in a move seen as a significant concession. Um, uh, you know, he had threatened additional trade sanctions on China. However, at the meeting, um, I guess after their meeting on the sidelines of the main G20 summit in Osaka, I guess he could, did confirm that the U.S. would not be adding tariffs on the $300 billion worth of Chinese imports and that he would continue to negotiate um, for the time being. So, um, you know, again, uh, there was a subsequent press conference. Uh, he did declare that the U.S. technology companies could sell to China's Huawei uh, which is, you know, effectively reversing a ban that was imposed last month by the U.S. Commerce Department. Um, and, you know, I guess they're positioning this this trade talk as a win for the U.S., but, you know, maybe also, you know, giving in to Beijing exactly what they wanted on Huawei. Um, so it's not really still clear if there's a complete reversal, um, but it is, it is a significant concession Um uh, which is which is good. I think the resumption of talks and pressing the pause button on more tariffs will be seen kind of as a short term as positive for the markets and for American businesses. And, um, you know, it's, you know, the Chinese businesses have been suffering as well. I mean, the trade war was hit, um, has hit like investment plans, exports into the world's uh, second largest economy. Um, it doesn't really mean that the trade war is over. Um, there is still tariffs on hundreds of billions of dollars of goods that are still in place. Um, and the two sides still have a lot of things to still agree on. Uh, but it looks like, you know, there's some concessions here. Um, so it looks like for now, though, um, you know, it's, it's a positive thing that they are talking again. Um, but, you know, talking can only take you so far. So hopefully, you know, as the weeks go by, months go by. Uh, we'll maybe hopefully see more progress. So as a result, um, you know, we'll be talking about a couple of Chinese stocks because we might see some market reaction to some of these picks. And so hence why Baidu's on the list. Um, I mean, you know, Baidu um, did have, you know, some sort of inside day last week. And, um, you know, it was kind of slowly moving back up if you look at that chart. Um, but again, it's not the nicest uh, looking chart with everything in consideration. However, with some of these concessions being made, um, you could definitely start to see that uh, Baidu could certainly start to reverse on a positive uh, trend. So I'll just turn it over to Jim really to talk about the chart because there could be a, a reversal here on this um you know, particular chart. So, Jim, let's hear what you think about Baidu. Well, over a year's period, Baidu has had a huge sell-off from 274 high down to a 106 low at 180. That's a bargain. Bargain. Yeah. J.P. Morgan did put a price target at 120 on it from 150. I do believe, personally, you know, I don't truly always listen to the fat cats on Wall Street. I think it's oversold. We also... Our room runs Trade Ideas Scanner, and we also have two alerts on it that we watch. We're going to be watching on a daily basis next week. It's going to be the Chinese stocks that are most up in five days, and then 
the China movers for today. So if you'd like to join our room and watch them scanners, that'll be pretty pretty good for you for a trial basis. So here's the chart right here on the yearly. You can see, like I said, 274 down to 10680. I'm going to pull up the 20 day. I like looking at the 20 day after I look at the year. I've got two moving averages on here, and those are my EMA 34 and 20, and I switch back and forth all the time from learning more and more about different moving averages. We did have a crossover on this a couple weeks ago, and it bounced up to 121.50, so I think that's a pretty good little target to hit at 120 put out by Morgan. Also, we have a 118.97 resistance here. And you can see up after hours, we're up at 117.73. Low support or support level on this could go down a couple bucks to 115.25. I like that. I like that real well for a second support. And maybe your fourth support's going to be right here around the moving averages at 116.12. And I'm going to draw that little trend line. Oh, I see another one right here I like even better. This 116.48. So I'm going to take out this 12 here. I'm going to delete that because I like that other one a little bit better. We'll remove that drawing. So here we go. We have a 20-day low right down here, right around 107.45. I don't think we're going to see that. We're going to see maybe a low support at 113.14. Your second support is going to be at 115.25. And then your first support is going to be at 116.48 with three resistances that we, we got to break. We're going to try to break that top next week at 121.50. Uh, 120.78 for your second resistance, and your first resistance is going to be right here at 118.97. Well, it's down right or up to 119. I am bullish on China. I do believe we're going to have a turnaround, and I, I do like Trump as a negotiator, and I also like the Chinese too. So let's have a good week, and by do next week. The next one, and uh, like I said, you're willing to stop this video at any time, copy and paste these charts and compare them to your own ideas. Don't go off mine, just go off yours. But if they can kind of compare to mine, that's a double backup for you. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be AMD. You know, AMD, you know, just keep a watch on this. I mean, obviously, they're giving some serious competition to NVIDIA with all their new product lines and uh, hearing really positive reviews about the speed of their products um, and the price point. I mean, this is, you know, setting up some threats in terms of what the competition is watching. Um, you know, uh, keep a watch on AMD because I actually do like the weekly chart. I mean, you know, Friday's chart, um, there was a, you know, bearish engulfing candle there. But you know what? Um, over the course, you know, longer term, I still think that um, the, the trend of this chart is still looking... Um, bullish so really just depends on what strategy i mean for a day trade um keep it on watch um but you know for a swing trade uh kind of maybe looking to take advantage of maybe some of these dips here um but you know i i still like amd i think the the stock has a lot of potential longer term as well um you know they're you know the semiconductor space has taken a bit of a hit as well so I'm hoping with, um, you know, again, with this uh, China concessions that hopefully we'll also see some sort of reversal here on AMD on an uptrend. And Jim, let's hear about it from you. Yep. Well, Jim's talked about this creating a new channel. And I did have a low support right around the 2950 area after that run up to 34 bucks. We did kind of go below that for a couple, three days down to the 29 area which I also had as a low support on this trade as you can tell right in here this pattern right in here right down at 2908 and then we even went down below that and anytime it goes below my blue line support area it's a strong buy to me right now I still want to keep this in a channel above the 2950 area all the way up to the $34 area with the pivot point somewhere right around the uh, 3040 to the 3078 and the last three days last week it did have a nice little trend line wedge going upwards on it and we're going to pull this up back to the 20 day now we are at the 20 day so let me magnify it and get this fixed you can see i've held this 20 day support channel here 
at 2950 to 2971. So I'm still going to keep that going. I do believe, and I'm going to color that in right now. I might spend a few extra minute minute on this chart here because I just love this 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 company. They worried about comp the other chip makers are worried about the competition that AMD is putting out, which gives me even a bigger bullish sign that I still love this trade. So the resistance we're going to have to break, and all these trend lines are, are just places where I think it can pull back to and supports and resistances, and the red lines are the strong indicators where I think it could stop at. So the next week's resistance level that we want to see is going to be 3257. If I can get up to that 3257 and then create that little channel that I'm talking about, I'll be very excited. Anything past that's going to be uh, going to be uh, what do I usually say a free gift, and that's where you want to take your profit. Pullback supports to get in this trade are going to be right around the $29 area if it decides to pull back. Once the momentum starts on this trade, either way, it can go up and it can go down. It just don't ever kind of just hang around and go back and forth. And that's what I like about this trade here, especially. So the resistance we're going to have to break come out Monday is going to be $31. If we can get to 31, go to 31.48 and then 31.82 with a resistance of 32.57 for next week. Pullback support is going to be right around the 29.08 for a low. Anything below that is a strong buy. And then the support area is going to be between 29.50 and 29.71. I'm going to pull up the daily one minute and have a real, or daily five, five day, five minute, and we can get a better look at it. So we did break past that resistance. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday, it did pull back a little bit to support level of 3040. So keep this thing on watch. Like I said, you're willing to pause this at any time and copy these charts, but just don't share them without my name. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be, and I am for real, it's going to be real. New IPO. Yeah. Okay, so... You know, I do want to mention this reel. It's called the Real Reel is the website there, and you can check it out. Um, you know, this is a website, uh, a company that, you know, is being managed by Julie Wainwright. You know, she's an e-com entrepreneur. Now, for those of you that may not be familiar with her name, I mean, she used to be the CEO of Pets.com. And as you guys know, Pets.com uh, mm -hmm. removed itself from the market uh, uh, shortly after their IPO. Um, so she is now the CEO um, and founder of The Real Real. And this is an online uh, marketplace store. As you can see, Jim's showing it to you. And um, they basically sell luxury items, authenticated luxury items of consignment. So there's a lot of people that have, you know, these high-end designer products. You know, they have Louis Vuitton, they got Chanel, Hermes, Cartier, Rolex, Prada. They got Balenciaga. I mean, they just have a slew of designers um, that people are always on the hunt for. And by the way, it's not just women's stuff. They have a lot of men's stuff as well. And, um, you know, a lot of men love wearing designer stuff. And they have, like, watches and shoes and clothing and luggage um, you name it, you know, they have it. So depending what you're looking for, they even have like jewelry, watches, they have even home decor. Um, so if you go onto this website, you can basically click the categories that you want, to, you know, available also to Canadians because they will ship to Canada. Um, and they will convert the, the, you can shop on Canadian currency and they'll, so whatever you see price wise is Canadian dollars, which is great. So you don't have to do any converting yourself. Um, but you go online, you click the section that you want, whether it's designers, women's jewelry, watches, home, kids, items on sale. You basically go there, you click, and you basically can see what are the things that you are looking for. And uh, you know what? They got pictures of everything. And the reason they call it the real real is they have apparently 250 people that work at the company that specifically. Um, all they do full time is look at the items, authenticate them, and make sure that they are legit, real, authentic products. Um, and, you know, they guarantee that. So 
um, you can feel safe because, you know, there's a lot of these online places too um, that sell products that are, you know, designer, but you don't really know if it is a designer. So with the real real, they really do promote the fact that it is authentic and you can feel confident with your purchase. Um, so that's good to know. Um, they also have the stores. I mean, you can actually go in person. They have several locations, a couple of them in New York. Um, you can actually go in person to the real real store and actually look at the stuff in person. So, um, you know, if you're shopping and you're in town, hey, you can go check it out. If not, go online. So um, this IPO just started on Friday. And so, uh, you know, it did have some action. I did see it go as high as uh, just slightly over $30 and then had to pull back down to back towards $28.90. Um, you know, longer term, does this stock have a future? Um, you know what, my opinion personally, um, I think that a lot of people just really don't want to spend um, the money these days um, for a high-end bag and they're having no issues to buy one that's on consignment or one that's been used that's in very good shape. I mean, why pay twelve, thirteen hundred dollars for a or a thousand dollars when you can get it maybe for six or seven hundred dollars, even though let's say someone owned it. But I will say this most people that have an original high end bag or high end luxury good, usually they will take very good care of it. So, you know what? If it's in great shape, um, you know, who cares if it's a used item? I mean, I think it's great. I mean, I'm going to be looking online and seeing what's out here. Um, and I think everyone loves getting a, a deal. So, um, yeah, shop your heart's content. And Jim, uh, what do you think about this chart? And, you know, longer term, this company could be profitable. I mean, they haven't been as profitable as they should be. Um, but I think uh, this generation of millennials um, is loves to shop online. And I think we're going to see more and more of this happening. So um, I think this stock down the road um, is one to definitely keep a watch on and see where it's going to go. But I think longer term, this will be worth more money. Um, but it remains to be seen you know, over the next couple of weeks for sure. Um, how is this really going to go? Yeah. So Jim, let's hear your opinion on this. Um, although I know you don't have much of a chart to really go by, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. No, but I do have the thoughts about it. And I, I think this can pull back to the 2719 area and yeah. it'll try to find support there. And if it goes down below that 2719, I'd be patient with this trade. I wouldn't jump right in it. I'd let it kind of play out a little bit. But if we can get down to the 29, 2719 and maybe pull back from there and create a little channel for it, it did have a nice little pop on uh, the IPO that came out Friday. It did pop up pretty good, really. It opened up right around 2793 and bounced up to 30 and then pulled back pretty, pretty fast. And here's the five minute daily chart that I'm looking at right now. And then it ran up kind of consistently in a trend all the way back up to that second resistance at 29.45 so me if I was watching this trade I would let it, I would just watch it for a week and if we had like a few knives I would play the knives on them I'd play them for a short scalp I don't think I'd truly hold it myself until I it consolidated and we started getting some more news out about it and we start hearing about the earnings and stuff so this is real we have a low support right now that we want to get to a double bottom at 2719 anything below that you might see a, a buy to bring it back up to that support area and then your pivot point is going to be right around the 2844 to 2889 and then you have or your resistance will start right around the 2889 and that's where we are after hours at 29 bucks so we're kind of at the, at the first resistance and then you've got the little pivot point or I would say support levels at 2719, 2793, and 2788. The resistance to break will be 2983. But I do believe this is one that I'm just going to watch and learn about. And that is real, man. And I am for real. CETV is next. Okay. Well, CETV. I did pick this one here. This is called the Central... European Media Enterprises, and you guys that know me, 
should know why I like it. Um, so I do like this actual stock. First of all, I just want to tell you a little bit about the company. Um, this is a media and entertainment company. They broadcast content um, uh, in Central and Eastern Europe. They basically have like three segments. They have like a, a media pro entertainment. They have new media. And they have 36 televisions channels. And they approximately reach about 50 million people in six countries. Um, so they have, you know, they're in Bulgaria, they're in Croatia, they're in the Czech Republic, um, they're in Romania. So this company also, they also sell DVDs. I mean, I don't even know who watches DVDs, but, um, you know, they, they also sell television rights. So they're very big. Um, and also they are based in Bermuda, funny enough. But you know what? I like this chart because not only does it have a 52-week closing high, um, it is ready for an expansion breakout. And it also has my favorite pocket pivot. So you guys know that's the footprint for a potential new move in the works. So, Jim, let's hear about CETV's beautiful, beautiful Yep, we did have kind of a double top breakout on the year. We had a year high up over back in here right around the 425 area. I don't have any trend lines on this chart. I'm going to show you here later on today. I'm going to be doing a video on my moving averages. You do see we did have a little crossover here of the 34 over the 200 right here, and it bounced on up pretty good, created a little cons a consolidation at resistance at 415. So that's where we're going to put our support low at it at 415. I'm also going to go down here a little bit lower and we've got a lower support right down here right around the 394 area. So anything below to that 34 moving average on a yearly is going to be a support level. We did bounce after that breakout over the crossover that you see right here. Let me go ahead and draw that crossover in so I can remember that. We had a crossover that bounced up and then started curving down and the sell-off came to the 200 EMA. Once it hit that 200 EMA and consolidated for about a week and a half, it went ahead, bounced up and started really a progressive upward trend. Resistance level on this is going to be where she finished up after hours and that's going to be right around the 436. So I'm going to draw that line in here right now. And this is kind of a free learning lesson for anybody that wonders why I have so many lines in my charts. They are called supports, pivot points, and resistances. We do have a pullback also right here, right around the 419 area. So I'm going to be drawing a trend line in there. And then I'm going to have a lower support right down here at 406. So I about got this drawn up already to be calling it out. So now I move it to a 20-day. Once I get it to a 20-day, one-hour chart, I look for any places that I might have missed. I do see a little place right here, but it's, it's not much to cry about, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in here because it did consolidate at that 412. That's what I'm going to call pivot point. But we do have a support level on this that we got to go to too. And you see where this wick on this candle is right here and these two little splits right here. So I'm going to draw another one right at 424 with another support level right down here at the 432. So, I mean, that's not much of a spread. We're going to bring it up to the win it, one minute daily, and I'm going to look at it, as, at it as a daily trade here. We did pull back to the 200. This is what I like using on these breakout stocks. When they pull back, they usually pull back to that 200 EMA and bounce off that. If it got in that trade off that 200 at 429, you could have run this up easily up here to 440 for a scalp. With that right before into close, we hit 443 high. So that's the high we got to break, but my resistance line is going to be here at 440. So let's pull up the five day and let's get a real good look on how I want to call this trade out. Five day, five minute. We've got a low support. It's going to be previous high that we had a couple days ago at 424. Anything below that's going to be a strong buy with a very low down here right around the 415 area. So that's going to be your low, low entry. Your first. So probably your second support is going to be right around this 424. It's going to be a pretty solid little place to get in this trade at if it does pull back. Then you've got another one right here that I'm liking right around this 429. So I'm going to be watching all these trend lines. I like to see it break 
the high I do have a resistance high at 440 if I can break that 440 we're going to move up past that 443 and create new highs if it pulls back it could pull back to either one of my moving averages but I'm going to call low support down here at 424 anything below that if it decides a knife is going to be a strong buy let's make that you know I just want to keep with that 424 I think that's going to be your solid entry point if not and it pulls back below that it's going to be a strong buy and let's pull up the daily one minute one more time this is the resistance we got to break is going to be the 440 and if we can break that 440 it'll go up to the 443 and create new highs this is CETV good luck to you the next one's going to be is HPJ okay so HPJ this is a China and I love this weekly chart you know this was actually on our amazing trade ideas scanner I gotta say our scanner picks up amazing setups and I love that it picks up very clean setups um, again this was on a beautiful expansion breakout this cost this cost the 50-day new uptrend on the chart a pocket pivot I mean this is amazing I mean look at that big huge volume surge on the bar um and you know this company um just so you know high power international they develop and manufacture um and market rechargeable nickel metal hydride and lithium um batteries primarily for use in obviously you know your electronic devices you know so you know triple a double a uh batteries they do battery packs they also have industrial batteries which are for people that have electric bikes, power tools, and obviously the electric toys. Um, they also make things for, you know, batteries for like things like you use every day, like your laptop or digital camera. Um, also, they're very into wireless communication products. Um, so they're a very big distributor and a reseller. Um, so the company used to be known as Hong Kong High Power Tech, and then they changed their name to High Power International. And they do have their headquarters in Shenzhen, which is obviously in China. So beautiful chart. And now with the China stocks probably waking up, this definitely should be on your watch for a nice, nice potential move. Jim, I want to hear about this chart. I like the big old gap on this thing, man. HPJ. I mean, it had a huge gap up on it. Let me pull up the yearly chart to look at it right now. You see the gap that it did here. I mean, from, from, uh, I guess it was took it, taken private by Corsotian. Did you read that? And we did have a resistance high on this at 384, and it was down here at a low at around three bucks, 305, and it ran all the way up to 445, with a resistance at close right around the 424 area. So I'm going to draw that in, and I'm going to draw this 405 in here. This is a new stock to me that I'll be watching next week. I'm going to pull up the 20-day and look at the 20-day real fast, and you'll see the huge gap up it did have. It broke out at around 325. This is an ideal stock for people that like to try to short something, but I don't think they got away with it too well Friday at all because they see them gap ups, and they just like to say that, that hits their radar. So we got a support level right here at 418, and also we have another one here at 409. I'm going to pull up the, the one minute. It held in a range. Resistance to break is going to be right at the 440 area, 444. And pullback support is going to be in this little channel. I'm not going to jump right into this trade come Monday. I'm going to see what it does. If the market pulls it up higher, that'll be fine. But if we have a little pullback, sell off I might get in on the dead cat bounce and I'm gonna give you just a range that I think it can pull to and that's gonna be this 384 I do not want to see it go below <clears throat> that 384 your first and second supports are gonna be and third supports are gonna be in this channel right in here at 405 409 and 418 pivot points right around the 424 area I'd like to see that hold then we've got your resistance here at 434 with intentional of a breakout again to move higher at 444. So keep HPJ on watch, and I'm definitely going to be watching it into next week. I'm not in the trade right now, but I sure like that gap up. And any knife like these are my favorite plays. 
I'll play the dead cat bounce or the pullback on it. So I'm looking for it to pull back a little bit. Definitely because it's just too big of a breakout. Low support right at 384. And that's High Power International in Company. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be NG Gold. Okay, so this one here is called Nova Gold. This is a Canadian company. And my God, I love this chart. You know, they say don't fall in love with the stock, but I got to tell you, I love these pocket pivot setups. And this is just another 52 week high. I mean, look at that chart. How can you not love that chart? So, you know, Nova Gold Resources, you know, they're in the exploration of uh, mineral properties, really mostly in Alaska, also in the US, and also in British Columbia. Um, they basically explore gold, silver, copper, zinc. Um, and they hold interest in the Donlin Gold Deposits, by the way, which is in southwestern Alaska. It actually has an area of approximately 81,361 acres. That is just insane. Um, but this company is no new kid on the block. They have been founded since 1984. And their head office is in beautiful Vancouver, Canada. So hello to all the viewers in Vancouver. Uh, gorgeous, gorgeous province. Um, but what a chart. I mean, I totally did not even see this this week. And I love it because it's just got support on all levels. And uh, I am looking to see a continuation on the stock. Um, I mean, it's had quite the move already at this point. Uh, but you know what? I still love it. I mean, I wish I would have like looked, seen this and uh, could have definitely used this one as an actual swing trade um, earlier in the week. So those of you that like swing trade setups or, you know, even something to watch for a continuation, I mean, this just this just thing's been just actually the whole month of June. This thing has done nothing but climb up every single day. And all I'm seeing on this chart is nothing but buyers buying this because gold's been pretty strong. And uh, Jim, I want to hear what you think about this golden chart. Well, I agree with you. I haven't seen a run like this in, in a little while where it just yeah. almost like, 20 day run like, completely straight yeah, up yeah non-stop a high like, spike it's obviously it's you know nice and slow but beautiful man. Well, i don't know about slow man that thing's really bounced up good so let's look at the uh we're looking at the year right here we did have a year low down here at 341 with a friday high of 592 it did bounce off the 200 ema and just continually moved up with a sharp spike on the 34 so I'll be following these two moving averages for sure, just to see if they pull back. But I don't look them at it, probably not at a, at a, at a yearly, but I'll be looking them at it a daily. So we're going to pull up the 20-day right here, and you can see the trend, just a very strong trend all the way for, off the 200 down here from 4 bucks to almost $6, 592 well, And every day has been a nice little run. It hasn't pulled back hardly at all. We did have a pullback last Tuesday where it did kind of hit a resistance and pull back to a support level of 435. And then she went ahead and next day and just bounced right up. Consolidated after hours, bounced up. Pulled back every morning, bounced up. So I'd look at this. I would jump in it if you're not in the trade. I'd wait till the market opens and see how it reacts. Because you can always take this slow grinder all the way up almost all day long. As you can tell by each day that's presented in the past 20-day chart. We did have a little lower volume back down in here, but I think this might have a lot to do with with the G Summit meeting and and the trade wars and how gold was all it was alerted by the fat cats up on Wall Street as a buy. So the resistance we got to break now is going to be 591, and support level on this trade right now is going to be right around the 556. I don't want to see it go much lower than that. Anything below that, it's going to be your 540 area, and actually maybe 536 for a strong buy. And that's going to be your low, low support. I'd like to see this keep going, but man, what a run. I mean, a $2 run here on a 20-day chart. But every, like I said, don't jump in the trade. Let it consolidate a little bit pre-market, and then maybe scalp it up, to, and hopefully we can break this resistance at 591 
and create new highs for next week. And I am going to be bullish on the market next week. I truly am. I did have a good week last week. And I also wanted to mention that June was the best month since 1938. And I personally believe this is the best economy that I've seen in my lifetime. And it's not the government running it, it's the private sector kicking in. And when the private sector kicks in, the market's going to be good. When the government pays for it, you're just betting, you're betting the odds. There are the odds either it's, it's, it can go up or down. But to me, the private sector is the one that this time is boosting the economy. And that's going to be NJ, NG. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be CPHI. You know what? I really like CPHI for the penny, penny plays. I mean, this has a lot of really nice setup here, too. You know, and CPHI is, you know, China Pharma. Um, you know, this company, you know, they're into uh, marketing generic and branded pharmaceuticals. Um, they do also biochemical products to hospitals and private retailers in China. Um, they also make like, you know, dry powder, injectables, liquid. They do tablets, capsules, um, oral solutions, granules. Um, and, you know, their product that they have is really used for the treatment of the central nervous system and also cerebral cardiovascular and also respiratory issues and digestive and other diseases. So um, they have a lot of different things on the go, um, a lot of different product lines. Uh, you could definitely check it. I mean, this is, a, I've got to say, so such a cheap, um, you know, biotech company. I'm just really shocked. Uh, but i got to tell you, really liking this chart. This has supported the 50-day. The Bollinger Beds are nice. The stock's been going up three days in a row. This has a nice pocket pivot. I mean, everything that I want to see on a chart is there. And it's like it's calling my name. And you know what? I actually can see the potential on this chart. I mean, we got the support. We've been at the 200-day level. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see this chart has potential to go to about 40 cents as the first resistance. And if it breaks, you know, we could possibly see, I would say maybe we could see 50 cents, maybe 57. But I'm going to turn it over to Jim to talk about that because he's really good at those charts. Yeah, I want to talk about our room a little bit. One thing we try to develop in our room is for everybody to become their own individual individual trader. And we don't like them copying each other. We like them to learn their own specific skill that makes this market set up to do that. As I am one of the masters at the extended trend line method, these are 2018 trend lines that I'm looking at right now. And I noticed we just now started touching up to that 2018. I haven't looked at this stock at all, hardly this year at all, or I'd have my blue lines in here, and that would be the 2019 trend lines. So I go off of my 2018 trend lines as they were just written up today. And so we're going to look at the pullback support on this. And, and like, like I said, we like the beginner traders to come to our room so they can actually learn and educate themselves in their own specific way. And we have enough people in our room that can also spread each you can get a little bit of everybody and you can mold that up into one excellent way of the way you like to trade so we got a pullback support right here right around the 2862 I'm seeing right now I'm starting to add my 2019 trend lines in this trade also 2018 was a sell-off year for me or for the market which I predicted back on the first that we were going to have an uptrend 2000 and 19 and we've seen nothing but that we've seen all market day highs on almost every ticker that you can see or even look at yes there's going to be some that pull back that's that's just the case so let's look at the yearly we got a year high on this thing up here at 84 cents goes back into 2018 with a big old huge breakout for some reason it had some good news that day and ran all the way up and each time it runs up it pulls back so I want you people, if you see a big gap up on this trade, take your profit. And you'll always get another chance to get back in. So we're going to look at the 20-day right now. I like the 20-day. I'm going to pull up the 20-day and try to find me another support level. I see two of them. I see one here at 30.99, 31 cents basically, with a little resistance right up in here. And you see how we run into that 2018 resistance at 3338. 
and we did kind of pull back a little bit. So I'm going to add me a 32.99, which is right around 33 cents. I mean, give or take, with a low support right down here on the 20 day at 27.47, and also I'm going to put another one right down here at 25.26 cents. That's going to be your low low support. Maybe let's go ahead and pull her down one more channel here, down to 24.42 for a strong buy. We have a pivot point, and we broke past the pivot point into resistance. The pivot point is right here at 28.86, and we're going to call that the pivot point with the other three resistances below it, 27.47, 25.96, and 24.42, give or take a little bit of leniency right there with that. The resistance we've got to break out is going to be that 33.38. And I'm going to just pull up a different time frame here because I want to look at some other resistance levels. You're willing to stop this video at any time and draw these down. I'm going to add another resistance right here that I want to see at 46.44. Low support right around the 24.42. Pivot point is going to be these moving averages right in here right around the 28.86. And then we broke out into the resistance level which is going to be last year's 2018 trend line of right around 33 cents. If we can break past that, we've got a couple more resistances. We've got to break to a long of 46.44. Anytime this thing jumps up and you're up a couple hundred dollars, this is a penny stock, you want to take your profit. And I'm not kidding you. I'm, you know, you always play anything under a buck with a little more risk. And that's CPHI. And then we got one more, and then the bonus play, S O R L. Okay, so you know we've talked about S O R L before. You know they're an auto parts company. They manufacture and distribute automotive brake systems and other safety auto parts. Obviously, in China, they kind of have two segments. They got like commercial vehicle brake systems, then they got passenger vehicle ones, and they have like so many products. Um, I think over sixty-five categories. They do everything, spring brake chamber clutches, um, they do the valves, I mean, they just do everything. Um, so, you know, this company has been in business, you know, back since 2003. And you know what, they have their products in 104 countries. That's just incredible, they export to that many countries. Um, and so I like this one here because of the fact that I see another pocket pivot and I see that the Bollinger Bands are actually squeezing um, and we do have support here at the 50 day. So, you know what? I'm actually surprised to even see the stock at this price at the, you know, the 352. Um, so I do believe this is a very good setup for a swing trade and um, looking for this to have some sort of movement in the coming sessions. And so, Jim, let us hear you talk about S O R L. Looks like they got a buyout proposal coming out. Came out on 523, and also I like the part that they're restructuring some of their board members. So they added, you know, their committee committee members. So that's that's mm -hmm. exciting to me. It also filed for a compensation filing, uh, an F or a 8K on the 24th. So that's kind of I like that little shake up there. Usually brings up the stock. So let's look at SORL on a yearly. As you see, where my yearly right here? We've had an up and down ride on this. It had a low of 177 with a year high of 567 in 2018. So right now we're creating a little channel. We did find a support level at 325. 325 is going to be my low support on this thing. Anything below that, right around the 309 area, could be a real strong buy. With a, I mean, if it really decides to knife, 282 is going to be your little entry. We got a resistance, we got a break, and that's going to be right at 389. And I'm going to add one more little resistance right here at 372. So I've got these all drawn up. We're going to look at the 20 day now. 20 day, you kind of had just a little, little bit of action between this channel of 325 all the way up to 340. And then we had to break out last week from that 340 area. So I got another support here. I'm going to put it right at 345. It might hesitate a little bit, but I'm going to call this 340 your second support. And then maybe your, if it decides to pull back a little bit more, you've got a low support channel of 
325 to 330 right in here we got a resistance double top breakout that we need to see and that's right here at 352 let's pull up the daily one minute oh I'm gonna draw another trend line in here right there around 348 it probably can slam up up and down from that area and if it decides to sell off a little more this will be a stock that I'll wait I won't jump right in I like to wait on stocks like this for at least the first half hour and see if it has an idea if it's going to go up or down but the resistance we got a break is going to be that 352 pull up a daily one minute and I also will play off this 200 EMA on a daily one minute if it decides to pull back to that usually it consolidates there if not it'll pull back to that 340 so we got a double top breakout at 352 we've got a maybe your first support right at 348 your second at 345 and then 340 has got to hold if 340 doesn't hold it can pull back a little bit more and I'll also play them into the day if it decides to break out high off the 34 EMA and the 200 and that continues with the Sunday's watch list and I'm gonna throw in one that I really like that had a stock split Vegas called this out as a stock pick split play and it ran up pretty good it's consolidated in an area and that's called CETX it regains compliance on the NASDAQ listing last week I also like that news when I saw that so let's look at the Vegas is there anything you'd like to say about this stock first on which one CETX C yeah um let me take a look at that one I'll on go ahead and continue with the chart as you yes then them trucks. I mean, short term. I, I mean, it's looking bullish. Actually, it had a nice volume surge, to be honest. And uh, you know what? Um, also had a bit of an inside day. Uh, so you know, for those of you not familiar with the CETX, uh, you know they do the electronic manufacturing for the circuit board um, assemblies, and they also design and develop different cable assemblies and provide engineering services um, out there. And they also do um, a lot of like, uh, you know, uh, emissions for like greenhouse gases, gases, and um, you know they do a lot of stuff for the industrial uh, pro uh, pro uh, sector. So um, you know, I think uh, this looks pretty good actually. And this company is located, by the way, in New York, in Farmingdale. Well, what I like about it is also had all them new contracts up to a backlog of $50 million. And it just received mm -hmm. another one, too. And also like the smart desk, most of all, about this. I think it's a great innovation for upcoming traders, maybe. I mean, where you can just fly your hands around and things will happen. And the smart desk idea is it's just a new thing, new wave into the future. So I'm 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 real I'm I'm real bullish on this trade. I made real good money on it last week. I played it perfectly. Uh, the pullbacks, the knives were were very brutal, and I got in and out of this trade at least eight or nine times all week long and did very well. We did have a year high up here, right around. Well, it's a split, so that you know the chart's going to change and going to be adjustable. And I know the shorters are watching this real closely because every time it spikes up big, they're going to be shorting this stock for 20, 30, 40, even 60 cents at a time. So let's pull up the 20 day CETX. I erased all the trend lines. I'm going to start fresh on this. I got a low support down here right around the 225 area. We did have a nice little sell off on that for two days and it really got me all excited about this trade and I alerted it to the room. And then last Thursday, we had a big run on it all the way up from this low support right around 179. This is a 1.5 million float, a little bit less, to resistance line right here, right around 526. And I am going to do, like I said, I'm going to show you how I use my EMAs. So there will be an upcoming video later on today with this, with how I use these on a, on a, uh, on a trade, especially on breakout stocks. So we got a 435 right there, and then I'm going to draw up another trend line right here around 380. These are all resistances. This is oversold. It could be due for an offering too, so keep that always in mind when you're trading this trade. I was in it, and someone mentioned it at the end of the day that it could, you know, that it was, it, it had registered for an offering. So 
I mean a while back so I went ahead and took my profit and I'm gonna wait for the pullback if it decides but I'm gonna be watching this trade very closely next week playing it off my 200 and my 34 EMA so let's pull up the five day let's look at this little run we had that I played Thursday it ran all the way up from that low of 178 all the way to 539 it had some brutal knives in here but every time it knived you were able to get in this trade and take it up 30 40 cents and we did find a little support level right down here at 464 so that's going to be another resistance and I see another one right here right around the 345 area it's good that you're able to watch me draw these trend lines in you can kind of get a scope of how I trade so let's look at the daily one minute and let's get an idea of what we did pull back so I'm glad I did sell it I got in this trade at 309 on the crossover you see the crossover here of the 34 over the 200 and we had two of them actually and we did cross down so that was time to get out of the trade but I got in the trade at that place because I'm very bullish on this stock and I noticed the shorts weren't, weren't all over it like they were on Thursday because they were saying you know this thing's gonna knife they don't care about the news they don't care about all they care about is how high that breaks out and I don't even think half the shorters know even how to look at a chart they just go for the for the momentum of a breakout stock so it did pull back to about 385 after hours and I'm gonna draw that 385 you see it this I mean 285 you see this right here where it did pull back during the day at 285 I called that trade out also once that moving average started to bounce up it was a great time to get in this trade now and you always watch the ball there's two things that I like to look at when I'm in a trade like this and that's going to be the tape the time in sales and that's also going to be the level two I noticed a lot of fake walls coming up on this trade on the bid and when I see a fake wall just all of a sudden pop in I know it's it's a scam I know it's a setup they're trying to get you in that trade and then all of a sudden that wall is going to drop and it's going to be gone and you're going to be down 20 30 cents so when I see something like that and I'm up in the money I'm out of the trade and that's another lesson that could be learned if you watch the level two and you watch the tape and always them two right there will tell you exactly the story of how the stock's going to run so I'm very bullish on this stock CETX and just keep it on your watch if it pulls back and the momentum's still there I'm going to be in this trade myself and that's it for the aftermarket report please subscribe to our YouTube channel also would like you to ring that bell we also have little icons here on the left that will take you to our Twitter page please if you have a Twitter account or if you don't join up there's a lot of good traders on, on Twitter and so hit that follow button and you can get Miss Vegas she puts in her updates in here on a daily basis even option calls and we gotten some good followers from her posting her little alerts in this little Twitter page too we also have icons to our stock twit page and we pin her guys to Facebook YouTube channel but we really want you to subscribe to that YouTube channel if you're not a member and Miss Vegas it's up to you to say the rest well you know what I think we've said a lot of things today and there's a lot of good stocks to watch for this week so you know if you like the ones we've talked about put them on a watch list for tomorrow and put on what's out there um, you're welcome to come visit the room for a free trial uh, if you're not, if you've never checked it out, feel free to come by. And if not, you don't have time, no worries. Just follow on social media. I try to post some things throughout the day. Um, so maybe you'll catch something. I know I posted uh, Facebook on Friday. Uh, we actually had option calls for $0.12, cents, which is $12 a contract. And those ones went all the way to 43 So I know there were people that... Um, we're appreciative of the alert on options and um, you know we caught it basically on the break of a breakout a bit of a little mini breakout so people were able to uh, make a hundred percent I mean some people you know they make a hundred percent on an option call they're out like you know they don't want to hold uh, you know for pretend especially for something that expires the same day but um, you know one guy <laughs> told me he's got 300 contracts and he was looking for 85 cents and this is on social media and 
I told him good luck because you know to, to hold that many contracts the same day and thinking it's going to 85 cents um I think he was dreaming um you know that's really tough and you know if they expire the same day who's going to want to buy those contracts such last minute you know um you're not gonna be able to liquidate them so um the risk is a lot higher especially when you're buying something that expires the same day um and on a friday to, to top it off so anyhow so uh congrats to people that followed or that saw the alert um you know twelve dollars is not a huge risk and uh people uh did well on it so congratulations so uh that's it so hope everyone has a great rest of the weekend and by the way I want to say happy Canada Day. Tomorrow is Canada Day. Um, it is a statutory holiday in Canada. So happy Canada Day to all the Canadians. Uh, the Canadian market will be closed tomorrow. However, the U.S. market is open uh, because the uh, U.S. will have their July 4th closure on Thursday. So uh, for those that trade Canadian stocks market, please remind you that the market is closed for you guys. And, uh, but you know what, if you trade U.S. stock, uh, markets open. So have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow. This is the Aftermarket Report. Sunday's edition is always longer than the weekdays. Um, we just want to say we love stocks, and today's date is June 30th. We're off to a new month of July, and let's have a very good July like we did in June. We broke all year records in June and I do believe July is going to be just as good or even better it's not may go away anymore the market has changed and it's open to a lot more people and that's what I like about this is something you can take home you can work at any time any day many hours as you want you know I could do this one hour a day and I could be satisfied and go out and play golf sit by the pool and even have a drink but I like sticking around. Vegas is the same way. We're very enthusiastic about this, what we do. And we love stocks. And have a great next week. Have a great July.